Hey friends, welcome to another egg white bread experimentation video. I posted recently my perfected egg white bread with the addition of the yolk powder or the whole egg powder that gives the bread an incredible texture, takes away the memory foam, gives you beautifully shaped loaves, and I have gotten such a great response from people who have tried it. So many people say they're loving the texture that they're getting and they're really enjoying the bread and the recipe. But as with everything, there are a few people that are still struggling and still not loving the texture as much as they'd like to love it. And of course, I can never know if what they're tasting is the same thing that I'm tasting, if they've done something differently, or if their environment is affecting, you know, the way the bread is turning out. I can't know if they're just not loving the same bread that I'm loving, but it did spur me on to continue to experiment with different additions to the bread to see if I can improve the texture even more. If it was just me, I probably would be done and be like, this is it, this is perfect good enough for me and it would be my go-to recipe from now on. But you guys have inspired me to keep trying things. And I have three things that I am going to show you as add-ins in this video. Two of them I have already tried and have loved the results. The third one, I have not tried it in this specific way. All of these additions have some pros and cons, so you'll have to, you know, experiment for yourself, find first of all what you like, and then also decide if the cons are worth it, if the pros outweigh the cons, all that. But I am just trying to give you guys some different things to play with, different options, so we can all keep working on finding a recipe that we love and that is usable for us. The first add-in that I'm going to show you is inulin. Now, inulin is a fiber and it is often used as a sweetener. And the reason I started playing with it was because I had a commenter from the UK say that they used it in place of allulose because they couldn't get allulose in their country and that they got really good results with the bread as an allulose replacement. So I did attempt using it as an allulose replacement and I didn't love the results. I get a way better texture and color on my bread with the allulose rather than the inulin. I was hoping that the inulin would just give as just the same results as allulose and I could recommend that, but I really didn't love the paleness of the bread. The texture was pretty good, so if you just absolutely cannot get the allulose, try inulin, you might like it. I definitely think the inulin in place of the allulose was better than just no allulose or inulin at all. So then after I did that experiment, I noticed a difference in texture of the bread with the inulin, and I kind of liked it, and I thought, what would happen if I did half allulose, so instead of a fourth of a cup, do two tablespoons, and then replace the other two tablespoons with inulin. I did a batch like that. I got a beautiful brown loaf of bread, so the allulose did its work of browning, and then I got a really good texture from the inulin. One thing about the egg white bread is that it's kind of spongy. Like, normally when bread is really starchy, if you, like, mush it, it, you know, mushes together and turns into a paste. But when you mush egg white bread, it kind of just sponges back to its original shape. It doesn't mush in the same way. And I think that's what gives people the choky feeling when they eat it sometimes. I love that adjective. I heard it from somebody on Instagram and I think it's a perfect, a perfect adjective for some of the egg white bread out there. But whatever it was about the inulin, it just took that sponginess away. And when you pressed it, it would compress and stay compressed like regular bread. So I was super excited when I made this loaf. It was delicious. I loved the results I got, but <laughs> the, I told you there were pros and cons to each one of these additions. And the con with inulin, is that it can really mess up your digestion. I guess some people are just not sensitive to it and other people are, and I am one that is sensitive to it. So I definitely felt that after I experimented with those breads. Now I do expect that if I were to add inulin to my diet regularly, that my body would get used to it. It's like I just, I haven't been eating it, so I don't have the gut bugs readily available to digest it. But if I did make it a regular part of my diet, I think my gut would adjust. So I am still trying to decide if I want to experiment with that, if I want to add that into a regular part of my diet. My struggle with doing that though is like if I made a loaf of bread and served it to other people, 
I'm not, I can't assume that their guts are adjusted to inulin and that they're not just going to be in pain the rest of the day. So it kind of is not very hospitable, I feel like. So I don't think I'm going to make it a regular part of my life. And I'm still kind of searching for other things that maybe would have the same effect on the bread, but not the same effect on the gut. All that being said, though, there are tons of people that eat inulin a lot and they have it as a sweetener substitute. It's in a lot of keto baked goods and processed foods, and it might be something you want to experiment with. If you already know that you do well with it, I say absolutely go for it because it was wonderful. Let's head into the kitchen and I'm going to go ahead and make a loaf and so I can show you the texture. So the base recipe that I'm following is my final go-to egg white bread recipe that I will link up in the cards. Definitely check out that other video if you want step-by-step -step and all the tips that go along with making this bread. The only change I'm making right now is I am reducing the allulose to two tablespoons. Original is one fourth of a cup and I am adding in two tablespoons of the inulin powder. Also, I'll mention that with my recipe, you can either use dried egg yolk powder, one tablespoon, or you can use three tablespoons of the dried whole egg powder. Both of them work just as well, and it kind of just depends on what you have and what you can get in your area. Right now, I'm just gonna be using the one tablespoon of the yolk powder. looking beautiful. You can see it's still browned really nicely just with the two tablespoons of allulose. Totally worked out just fine. Okay, let's give this a slice so you can see the inside texture. I think the crust is softer than on the original, just a touch. So that is what the inside looks like. It's got some nice big holes. It's very, very soft. Just a perfect texture in my opinion. I have some of the regular recipe that just has the yolk powder added, no other add-ins. I'll just show you the comparison of the two loaves. You can see the texture doesn't look a lot different but as far as feel, this one is definitely softer. And I think this one, the one without any add-ins, is very soft already, but this one is even softer. The crust on this one is a little bit more chewy. This one is very soft. There's a little rip there. Let's see how it rips. So notice on the original with no add-ins, if I squeeze it, it kind of holds the squeeze for a little bit and then it pops back up, pops back up. Now on this one, watch, watch the squeeze on this one. It stays squeezed like you would expect a white bread to do. You know, if you take a piece of Wonder Bread and you ball it up, it turns into a solid ball of mush and I expect this one would too let's see if let's try <laughs> nothing like playing with your food 
So there's our ball of mush, probably not quite as much as a piece of Wonder Bread mushing up like that, but let's see. I don't want to waste an entire piece here, but let's let's see what this one does. So it didn't fall up too bad, but you can still kind of open it back up and it still looks like the same piece of bread. Let's see this one. If I tried to open it up, you can, but it's not quite it's not quite the same. So this just kind of gives you more of the mouthfeel of bread where when you put it in your mouth, it starts to dissolve like bread usually does. This one requires more chewing because it doesn't just mush like that. So this, it hardly looks like I mushed it up at all. It looks like I could put it right back together with this and it would be a regular slice of bread. As far as taste, this one tastes really good, but I don't notice a huge difference in taste between the two. I think the main difference that I notice is in the texture and the mouthfeel of it. It just gives a little bit more of that dissolve in your mouth bread feel that you're kind of looking for. I just think the difference between these two is hilarious. All right, next add-in. And this is something that you've already seen me use if you watched my herbed dinner roll recipe. In that recipe, I added arrowroot starch. And for those of you that are keto and low carb, you might freak out, starch? No, don't add starch. This is supposed to be low carb. And I totally understand that. I will point out though, that tons of keto flours, keto approved flours like uh, almond flour and coconut flour and any other flour that you find, they all have a little bit of starch in them. They also have lots of fiber and other things. And because the starch is a low amount in it, it's approved for keto and just fine. What I am doing with this pure starch is just adding a little bit to the recipe. So it's just like adding a bunch of almond flour or a bunch of coconut flour, but just the starch part and none of the other stuff. The amount of arrowroot starch that I have been adding to my bread adds about one gram of carb per slice or serving. So the original recipe has 0.1 grams of carbs per slice or serving. And this one with the arrowroot starch added, I only add two tablespoons to the recipe. The carb count is increased to 1.1 grams per serving. So it's still super minimal. That's way less than almost any keto bread you're going to find in the grocery store. So for me personally, I am very comfortable with a little bit of arrowroot starch. It's extremely minimal and the effect it gives to the bread, for me, it's totally worth it. But again, like I said, pros and cons. The con is there's an extra carb per serving. And another con is maybe you'll get kicked out of the keto club because you actually even consider including arrowroot starch in your diet. All my ingredients are ready to go and I wanted to mention that I do add my two tablespoons of arrowroot starch at the beginning with the egg white powder. Also, I wanted to mention that arrowroot starch can also be called arrowroot powder or arrowroot flour and they are all the same thing. One thing about the arrowroot flour is that it makes a beautiful loaf. I love the shape that I get when I add those two tablespoons. And I've actually found that I get the best shape if I don't use quite as much batter in my loaf pan. If I save out enough to make like one or two little buns, then I get a nice smooth top and it just turns out like the picture perfect loaf of bread but let's get it sliced up here and we'll look at the texture. I can get super thin slices with this one as well. I love that. All right, let's look at this real quick. Just incredible texture, super soft. And you can see how that it's very crummy. <laughs> this is such crummy bread. 
but um, that actually gives it a really good mouthfeel. The little bit of starch from the arrowroot flour just gives you that starchy flavor and that starchy mouthfeel that you just don't quite get when you're using only the egg powders and gums, which makes sense because it is a starch. So you're getting that little bit of the starch flavor. But again, it's only adding one carb per slice if you cut the loaf into 16 slices. So it's still probably lower than most of the low carb breads on the market. 1.1 carbs per slice is still extremely low and extremely easy to budget into your carb allowance for the day. I just absolutely love the slices. They just look so perfect and the feel is just like bread. So I think the starch um, from the arrowroot kind of soaks up the moisture from the uh, egg yolk powder. And you know on the other ones, when you squeeze them right after they're cooked, you kind of get that wet sound when you squeeze it. With the um, arrowroot, I don't get that. It just feels like nice, soft bread. And I think it's that the starch kind of absorbs that moisture, and it just gives it a really nice bread feel. All right, let me give it a rip here for you. That's what the inside looks like. Okay, I guess I have to do the crumple test now to see if I can crumple this up and if it smushes or if I can unfold it back into a slice of bread. Here we go. Look at that, guys. That is mushed. Definitely more mushed than the original. I'd say probably similar to the um, inulin powder in its mushability. So that's gonna give you that really nice mouthfeel, like the melt in your mouth, starchy texture that you're looking for. I'll also show you the squeeze test here. Squeeze and fingerprint. Bounces back just a tiny bit, but it definitely holds. So again, that's just gonna give you that nice mouthfeel it's not gonna be as choky, trying to avoid the chokiness as much as possible. So currently the arrowroot starch is my favorite addition. I love the shape of the loaf, I love the flavor, I love the texture. The only downside for me is that it does add the one carb per slice, so it's not as pure of a protein as the original, but for me, the one extra carb per slice is totally doable, and I think I will be incorporating arrowroot starch in my breads on a regular basis. Now on to the final add-in, and this is one that you guys probably already all know about, a lot of you already use. It is xanthan gum. And I have not been a fan of xanthan gum thus far. I will say though that I've only tried it in one recipe once, maybe twice. I tried a couple versions. And I didn't like it, but there were other things about the recipes that were different, so I thought I would go ahead and give xanthan gum another chance. A lot of people love it. It's in a lot of other recipes. So I wanted to just see if I was missing out and if maybe I just didn't do it right the first time. So I'm gonna use my same base recipe. I'm gonna add three-fourths of a teaspoon and we'll just see how it goes. Here we go with the xanthan gum version. As with all of the other add-ins that I'm doing in this video, since none of them have fat in them, I add them at the beginning with the egg white powder. I am going to be doing 3 fourths of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Check this out. You can come see. What happened? What happened, Renee? Uh, wow. That's crazy. It looks like it's opening up its mouth to eat us all. What do you think? Let's do that backwards. It's all, we're opening our mouths to eat it 
Mom, the top is so smooth. The top is so smooth. I like Looks like peanut butter. I like the top. I like the top too. So, yeah, so the xanthan gum peanut. seems to give it that really smooth top, but I think it would be better if there was less batter in the pan. I think on all of these, less batter in the pan makes it a little bit nicer shaped loaf, but I have never seen one do this crazy of a loaf. It's is it like peanut me. butter? Like Maybe we could put some eyeballs like on the top of here and it would, look, it would look like a, a live hamburger bun or something. For Halloween we could do that. That would be hilarious. No, but on Good Burger, do you remember? Oh, on Good Burger there was one that ate people? No. Uh, no. No, no, no. didn't eat people. It, yeah, dream. It, he just had a Oh, I see, I see. All right, let's cut open this xanthan gum bread and see what we got. I did notice that the sides sunk in a little bit more than with the other breads, which is interesting. And obviously it had that crazy shape right when it came out of the oven, but that did sink down. So it looks more like a normal loaf now, but the side sinking in, not my favorite thing, but other than that, it looks beautiful. The coloring is actually lighter than the other breads. I did put the same amount of allulose in, so I'm not sure. It must have been the xanthan gum that somehow affects it to give, um, it's like a smoother texture and then a lighter color. So I am very interested to see what the inside texture is on this. Like I told you, I made one recipe that had the xanthan gum and I really didn't like the texture. It made the bread really gummy inside, which makes sense since it's a gum. I was just turned off to it at that point and I hadn't tried it again, but there were a couple other different things about that bread. So it may be that I just didn't give the xanthan gum a proper try. Okay, so what I'm noticing is that the texture is back to memory foam. It doesn't have those nice big bubbles like the original with, um, the egg powder, I did put the yolk powder in this one, but it did not have the same effect on the bread as it does without the xanthan gum. And then also the side sunken. So something about the xanthan gum counteracted the effect of the whole egg powder or the yolk powder to bring it back to a memory foam and allow the sides to sink in. So that's really interesting. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's got that squishy wet sound and feel again. I'll give it a little rip for you. Definitely the memory foam is strong with this one. Very memory foamy. I'm gonna give it a little taste. So I'm definitely not a fan of the three fourths of a teaspoon of xanthan gum per loaf like I did. I have seen lots of other recipes that use xanthan gum and anywhere between a fourth of a teaspoon and a full teaspoon. And so it might be that the amount just needs to be played with to get it just right. If you guys use xanthan gum in your bread, let me know if you still have it come out like memory foam texture and how much you use in your recipe. That would be interesting to know. Now, of course, I've got to do the crumple test just to see how this one fares. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be the squishiest. That looks pretty squished up. Yep. So it definitely made the bread squishier and softer, but it got rid of those nice big air bubbles that give you the really nice bread texture. So it'll be interesting to experiment and maybe use less of the xanthan gum and see if using less allows for more of the air bubbles, but still with the same like squeezeability of this bread. Here is a view of all three loaves side by side so you can really see the difference in texture. Plus this is my base loaf that doesn't have any add-ins in it so you can see the difference there. The inulin and the arrowroot both gave a really good texture and fairly comparable in texture. There are some things I like better about the arrowroot. Like I said, it seems like the starch absorbs some of the liquid and so you don't get that um, spongy wet sound and feel right at the beginning. Although I typically find that that goes away after one night in the fridge, so that's not a huge issue, but I do like the texture a bit better from the arrowroot. 
Who would have guessed adding a little starch to bread would make it taste better, of course. But the inulin does add a really great texture. And if you are someone who can handle inulin, there are plenty of people that can. I definitely recommend that addition to the bread. I love the texture that it gives and it still allows for the nice big air bubbles from the whole egg powder or the yolk powder. And it is just a delicious bread with an excellent mouthfeel, kind of like that melt in your mouth type feel that you want from a white bread. As far as the xanthan gum bread, I definitely cannot recommend using it the way I did with the three fourths of a teaspoon. That just did not work out for me. The texture is really, really bad. It has a wet memory foam feel that I really can't reconcile with. I am definitely open to the possibility that I need to play with xanthan gum more in different amounts. So I'm definitely open to the idea that I could find a way to incorporate it to um, give a better texture. Maybe if I just did a quarter of a teaspoon, it would have allowed the um, whole egg powder or the yolk powder to still give the big bubble effect, and but then also still get some of the mushability that the xanthan gum definitely gave because it's very mushy. So definitely going to play with doing less. I also am very interested in doing some combinations of these different uh, add-ins because maybe, um, you know, one tablespoon of arrowroot, one tablespoon of inulin, and a quarter teaspoon of the um, xanthan gum is going to give a really great texture. And the only way we're going to find out about that is if we experiment. I also have some ideas for other add-ins that I want to play with and try. So definitely stay tuned for more experimentation. If none of these options look like they were going to be for you, um, there may be some more options coming. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'm really enjoying playing with this recipe and trying to find options for different people, depending on first where you are, because some people can't get all of the same you know, ingredients that other people can, depending on where they are in the world. And then also we all have different tastes and different texture preferences. And so if we can get as many options as possible for people to try, I think that's a win. And everybody can kind of customize and find what they really like and what's gonna work well with their everyday diet and lifestyle. So that is all of my experimentation for today. I hope you guys are all doing great and I will see you again in another video.